What does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. It's very excited to check out Betabots Bite of Passage from Zagar Games at BNB Game Studio. This is for three to six players, taking about 30 to 60 minutes to play, and it's for ages, I'd say, I don't know, 10 plus. And in Betabots, you are going to be taking control of a Betabot, aka a robot, and you are going to be bidding on various different component upgrades so that you can go on missions and gain more money, so you can get more components, so you can go on more missions, and you can gain special ability cards and attack other people with code cards. It has a definite feeling of like a munchkin s game, where you're going to be upgrading your character and then trying to go on missions. You're going to be cooperating with other people, backstabbing other people, doing things of that ilk. But does it do anything unique or different based on the typical take that game let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're to get inside of beta bots so first of all we got a handy dandy rule sheet it is seven pages double-sided full color full of pictures illustrations examples and it's pretty well done there are a couple areas where you're like i wish they would give you a little bit more instructions on how things are supposed to work in particular the uh, the negotiation phase when you have to go on missions and uh, there's just a big free-for-all i wish they would tell you that but we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to that river so in beta bots you're going to try and get the most bits these are going to be victory points but they're also going to be currency which you will use to upgrade your beta bot so each at the beginning of the game you're going to get a beta bot like so and then you're going to upgrade it progressively through the game with various different components which will make you stronger and they will give you more or sometimes even negatives to various different attributes uh, if you get high enough on some attributes you'll unlock permanent special abilities which are these up here and you're going to go on missions but let's go over the components and then we'll get into the gameplay so first and foremost everybody's going to get one of these little boards right here you're going to get eight of these little plus slash minus counters and these are going to keep track of the four big stats in the game which are agility firepower structure and processor you're going to need those to complete these missions right here and you're going to start with 10 missions in the game there's 10 rounds in the game and uh, there's a couple different kinds of missions there's like calm town and trip tropolis and rust land and you're supposed to set them up in a specific way at the beginning of the game it's pretty simple uh, but it just makes it so each game will be slightly different so it's not like oh i should go for structure and processor every Every single game. Uh, we talked a little bit about the bits. They're coming, going to come in various different increments. 1, 5, 10, 20. Everybody's going to get a handy dandy little player aid card. And everybody's going to get 40 bits and 3 code cards. Code cards are going to do all sorts of various different stuff. If you played a game like Munchkin, uh, they'll bump up your stats. They'll knock down other people's stats. Allow you to swap parts with other people. They do all sorts of really cool, unique, special abilities. you also notice a couple of them have these gold rings on them. And those are some end game scoring that you'll be able to unlock but we'll talk a little bit more about that later so at the beginning of the game you are going to start with phase zero and you're going to put out as many beta bots as there are players so obviously uh you're not going to use all the beta bots in one turn and then you are going to take turns bidding on these said beta bots uh one thing i really like about this is it has a minimum cost in the upper right hand corner to kind of guide how much you should or should not be bidding for the various different ones so obviously uh this one has some pretty weak stats so it's only worth four this guy's worth eight but he's got two big powerful ones uh but you're gonna bid on these and it's a pretty simple auction like i would bid four then somebody would bid eight and then somebody would come up over top of me and say i'm bidding five and you have your own little bidding token that will differentiate your bid from someone else but eventually everyone's going to get one of these cards you're going to pay your bits and then you're going to put it in front of you like so next you're going to go to phase two of the game actually it's called phase one because you only do this phase to get the beta bots one time and during this phase, you are going to set out component cards. And you'll set out as many component cards as you have players minus one. So in a four-player game, you are going to have three component cards set out. And then you are going to have another bidding phase, very similar to this one, where people will be able to raise the bid. You also have the option to just take a code card and not bid anything if you would like to do that. However, you cannot get a code card and get a component. So the components, once again, they will bump up various different attributes. So let's say I won this one, I bid 10, nobody bid on top of me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it right there. And now those are my attributes. Uh, those are my, my numbers on my attributes, which you'll be keeping track of on this little tracker right here. So for instance, I have 8 agility, I have 5 firepower, I have 2 structure, and then I have 4 processor. And they give you 2 
for each one so you can mark some on the tens and then some down here. These are also double sided because you can go in the negative on certain attributes which obviously is pretty stinking bad. So once everyone has either gotten one component card or a code card you're going to move on to the last phase of the game which is going to be a mission and everyone is going to have to go on this mission. So in this particular mission you would need six firepower and six structure and this is where the game gets really open and really free form because everybody's going to be doing this at the same time so obviously i take a look at what i got over here i have five firepower and i only have two structure so i am going to need to team up with one or two other people in order to accomplish this mission but before you can team up with people you have to negotiate exactly what the uh how many bits you're going to get from going together also some of these missions will have negative things like it'll say uh you know if you get this one uh, you lose one component if not successfully completed, which really ups the ante, especially if you have to team up with other people. It's a really interesting aspect of this game. It's very freeform. People will be playing code cards on other people, swapping out stuff, uh, doing viruses and bumping up and bumping down stats. It's one of my favorite phases of the game, but that being said, some people are going to really want more structure during this phase of the game. After everyone's done it, either successfully or unsuccessfully, and it kind of just happens all at the same time, kind of simultaneously a little bit, you're going to put this over to the side, and then you're going to do another round of the components where you'll set out in a four-player game three components, and you'll bid on them, and you're going to rinse, wash, and repeat until you've gone through all of the missions. A couple other fringe rules here and there. You can only have five components down here in front of you, but some of the components will have yellow on them, and these yellow components will say let's see do they will say that they don't count towards your five maximum so that was one lets you draw a card well they're in here there's plenty of them in here i just can't happen to find any uh but it'll say yeah here we go this does not count towards your component limit. So it's not the best card in the world because it only gives you three structure, but it does not going to count towards your component limit at the end of the game. Now, eventually what's going to happen is people are going to go over the number 13 on the Agility Firepower Structure Processor. If you do that, then you are going to get to level up your robot and you're going to unlock a permanent, well, not permanent, pretty much permanent special ability uh, that you'll be able to use throughout the game. So for instance, the agility, gain four extra bits after completing a mission when not on a team, gain two extra bits after completing a mission, uh, pay three less bits to purchase component after winning bid. So that one's really, really nice. Uh, so there's going to be various different special abilities you will be able to upgrade your character with if you are the first or second person to get to 13. Also, if you ever go underneath 13, then you lose those special abilities. So people uh, will have incentive to bump you down so they can steal your special abilities, which is pretty cool as well. Uh, eventually you'll get through all the missions. Once you get through all the missions, you're going to tally up your bits. You are also going to see who has the most of a couple things. Whoever has the highest attribute of one specific thing. So let's say I was rocking like 35 firepower or something crazy like that. That means I'm going to gain 15 bits, which is a huge chunk of bits. Uh, next, whoever has the most gold component cards. So uh, these are gold component cards with these little symbols right here is going to get 15 points. Uh, excuse me. I, I jumped the gun there. Whoever has the most gold cards, these are the code cards, it's going to get 10 points. And if you have the most gold component cards, which will have that same little symbol on them, like, uh, like so, you are going to get 15 points. And if there's a tie, you both get the 15 points. And then whoever has the most points will be the winner of the game. If there's a tie, then you just tally up how much the tie people have attribute-wise. So who has the highest overall attributes. Whoever does is the winner of the game. And that's just in a nutshell. So you're going to play beta bots. All right, then, beta bots from B and B Game Studios. What are my final thoughts? Let's go to the pros. Let's go to the cons. First, on the con side, game is not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Three to six players is a pretty decent player count, but I liked it best at five and six players. It's not bad at three and four. I just liked it with more players because it made the auctions much more interesting. It made the cooperative aspect of the game when you get to uh, phase two where you have to go on missions much more interesting. And, you know, there's more people playing more crazy cards and doing all sorts of different things. And I like that an awful lot. Uh, next, the the graphic design, especially on the code cards, is just not as good as you would like it to be. You know, the graphic design on the components, I think, is really great. And I think it's really clean and simple. But with the code cards, I don't know, they just they didn't do it for me. And I had a couple people complain about how the text might be a little bit difficult to see with white text on a somewhat white background. It's a nitpick for sure, but it is something that I did want to mention because a couple people mentioned it. 
Another comment I had with this game is that some people are definitely not going to like how freeform the mission part of this game is. It is. It does not really hold your hand to the rules as to what you're supposed to do. It's just kind of wild, wild west. Hey, you team up, you team up, we all three team up, and then other people can play code cards on us whenever they want to play code cards on us. And it, it, it starts off really bumpy at first, but once you get a hang of it, I think most people are really going to dig that. But that being said, I did play with one person who really did not like how freeform that aspect was. So that's a your mileage may vary thing, but I still think most people will enjoy that. Any other cons that I have with the game? Um, you know, I wish the missions were a little bit more differentiated. You know, I, I didn't really feel like there was that much rhyme or reason to the missions. I thought, like, they would bump up in intensity as we went. And I guess to a certain extent they do, but it's just a little bit of a downer. Like, you have, like, two really hard missions, and you get to the last mission, it's like, oh, that's not that hard, and people, everyone can just solo it. And that's another thing. Uh, you really, this is the kind of game where there's a king of the hill aspect. So it does have some munchkin s problems in that aspect where if you're in first place, if people are going to be able to see your chips, they'll know who's in first place. Everyone is going to pummel you with their code cards. And also, there is a viable strategy where you just get code cards or you potentially bid on super duper cheap stuff. And that's a little bit lame. Uh, it kind of cheapens the auction a little bit, which the auction is my favorite part of the game. But that will tend to happen, especially as you get closer to the end of the game, where everybody's got their five components. Because you can play ten rounds, and you can only have five additional components on your beta bot, assuming you don't have special cards. That's what I got on the con side. Moving on to the pro side, I really enjoyed beta bots, and nearly everybody I played with really enjoyed beta bots, and it does a lot of really cool things, and I feel like it makes a lot of big improvements on Munchkin. I did an interview with them at Origins, and I immediately was really intrigued by this game because of a couple different aspects. First, I love auctioning, and I love creating my own unique robot. Now, creating your own unique robot doesn't feel... It doesn't feel like I had hoped it felt. I hoped it was going to be like, oh yeah, I've got this totally custom asymmetrical robot who's got the time warp drive and leaf springs and fiber optics. That really doesn't mean anything. It's all, oh, this number is higher than your number. Ha, you suck at firepower. And so that is a little bit of a bummer. That's something I didn't want to mention in the comments. I totally forgot. But what I do really like is how you still get to upgrade things and how it's kind of a race to get to these special ability cards. Because once you get them, they're yours unless you get bumped down. So I like that aspect a lot. So it was an aspect that I wasn't expecting that much in the game, the race aspect to get to these cards, but it really is big. If you can get one or two of those cards, potentially even three of those cards, that is huge for you. So I like that an awful lot. Another thing I liked, and I mentioned in the middle part, I mentioned it uh, just a second ago, I love phase two when you go on those missions. That is just so cool how it's just a wild west. Yeah, I'll team up with you and you team up with me and we have to decide how many coins each of us is going to get. But I'm like, I'm going to play two cards to make this happen, so i got to waste my valuable code cards so I should get more bits than you. But the other person's like, wait, I'm bringing this, this much more firepower and structure than you are. And it just becomes a really cool negotiation game. And if you have the right group for that, I really think that's where this game shines. Uh, I wish the missions were a little bit more interesting, and hopefully in the future, if this gets popular, they can do stuff like that with more creative missions that maybe have harsher penalties. But in the end, beta bots, right of passage, bite of passage, such a stupid tagline. Uh, I enjoy this game. I really like this game. It's going to go on my shelf. And I think for a lot of people, if you like, I don't want to limit this. I'm going to put it like this. It's a two-parter. I think this is a great family game. I think this is a great game night game. I think it plays higher player counts very, very well. It's pretty easy to learn and pretty easy to teach once you get your brain wrapped around the fact that, that it's a wild, wild west in phase two. Uh, but I think if you like Munchkin, I think you were really going to enjoy this game a lot. Now, that being said, a lot of the people I played this with are not the biggest fan of Munchkins, and they also really enjoyed it as well. But I am saying, if you do like Munchkin, this is absolutely one I highly recommend you check out. And if you don't like Munchkin, but you like negotiation and you like auction games, this is still a rock-solid game as well. So Beta Bots, Bite of Passage, for four, five, or six players, wholeheartedly recommend you check this one out. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know. If you could have a robot that did one household chore for you, one, and only one household chore for you, what would it be for me personally? 
you know, I want to say mow the grass. I really do want to say mow the grass, but living in Indiana, I would only get use out of that like four months out of the year. So I need to be more practical with my choice. So I'm going to go with vacuum the house. And that's with the assumption that they can climb upstairs and they can vacuum the entire house all by themselves because I have a giant St. Bernard. So that would actually make me and my wife's life much more stressful. You know, it would help with my allergies and help with, uh, you know, just the dog hair everywhere. But let me know in the comments below. If you had a robot that could do anything, one household chore, what would it be? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.